So this interface, right, on the vManage, everything that's happening in it is an API call at the end of the day. Hey everyone, it's David Bumble coming to you again from Cisco in San Jose. Adrian with me again. Adrian, what are you going to show us this time? Hey David, so this time I'm going to show you a SD-WAN based demo. So Cisco SD-WAN uh, based on the Vitel acquisition. But before I get to the demo part, I just wanted to tell everybody how we got to do this actually, because it came as a project that we wanted to showcase the power of the SD-WAN APIs, right? Yeah. And what you can actually do with the APIs. So I got involved in this through a Nanocad project. Somebody was like, hey, can you help me out? Yeah. Having a look at the vManage API and they had a specific use case. I helped them out and then actually got super interested because I love the REST API on the vManage. It's one of the most uh, exhaustive and complete APIs that Cisco has. Having discussions with the BU here uh, in San Jose, and then we had a couple of SEs out of Latin America, specifically out of Brazil, that they came to us as like, hey, we have this specific problem that we're trying to fix. Uh, we have a lot of managed service providers, right? Companies within Brazil that they offer the Cisco SD-WAN solution, but they offer it as single tenants. Yeah. So they have, they didn't go for the multi-tenant solution. Yeah. For whatever reason, they decided to go single tenant and they have hundreds of customers, right? Each one with their own environment, their own vManage, vSmart, vBond, and, and all of that. So their request was, can we get a web interface similar to the multi-tenant interface that Cisco provides, but for single tenants, yeah. right? So that we can get this interface, put it on the screen somewhere in a NOC uh, center, in a NOC team, and then they can see the status of all the tenants at all times. It's like, great, that's a nice use case, and it's a challenge for us to showcase the power of the API. So what we've done is that we've built an application, a web application for them. I developed the backend part in Python, and then a colleague of mine here uh, develop the front end in React JS. So this is how it looks. So just and before we go on, sorry to interrupt. Is you, yeah, your background isn't programming, is it? It's not actually no. So I'm a network person. I've been for the like past fifteen years. I went to CCNA, CCNP, CCIP was back then like the yeah. service provider, internet network professional, which they changed now. And then I went and I got the, uh, the CCIA routing and switching. And then I got some Juniper, and then I got a bunch of other, other certifications. But but you've written code on this. But yes, so the back end, the Python piece that uh, this is developed by me, of course, getting gathering, investigating, right, reading up on all this. But it took me two weeks. Oh wow! I would say right oh, wow. to get this working, uh, and then I work with, with my colleague Tom to get the front end working. So you can actually, if you want, you have access to this and all the content that we have in regards to SD-WAN on DevNet is actually on developer.cisco.com slash SD-WAN. Oh, wow. So you can start here, there's learning labs, there's sandboxes we have, and you can actually also download the Cisco SD-WAN demo right here. So you can take the code, it's in a Docker container right now, you can download, it's a zip file, you unzip it, you unarchive it, uh, and then you do Docker Compose up, and you have this, you have access to the backend code, you have access to the front end, it's all kind of open source in a way, uh, but take it as it is, right? So yeah. we're not gonna, not we're not gonna sell this, yeah. we're not guaranteeing the code, uh, we want just to make it available to the people, and actually some of the um, our partners in Brazil they actually started using this and developing features on top of it, so. But I just wanna hop on this point because, yeah. you know, you a network guy, but now look what you're doing. You're like developing solutions as a network, well, network person slash developer and companies are now using it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's inspiration, I think, for all of us, you know, that a network person can do it. Oh yeah, I mean, and if I can do it, <laughs> I mean, anyone can really, uh, trust me, <laughs> trust me on that. So you can download them on here, 
what I've done, I already have it running. So I did uh, Docker Compose here. Right, the anarchy, anarchy, uh, Docker Compose right here in that folder. Uh, this is the back end and the front end folders uh, just for you to see Docker Compose. And now I have the application running. So that's the interface, right? It's running on localhost port 8081. This is the front end and you get access to, you have the option of adding new tenants. So if you want to add more tenants to be uh, in this uh, one dashboard, you have the option of naming them then putting in here the name or the host name of your, of your vManage IP, your single tenant vManage, and then the password, change the port if it's different than the default one, and then the, uh, the username, right? So you have that, we have here too. By default, we have the sandbox, uh, and this is the DevNet sandbox. So when you spin this up, the sandbox will be there by default, because yeah. we want to just to show you how it looks. And then I added one more test um, vManage instance here. So you have here a pretty much consistent look, I would say, right, between your vManage interface and this. So let me just open up. If you click on the test, it's gonna actually open up that vManage instance. And you see here what I'm doing, you actually have control status, site health, when edge health. So this interface, right, on the vManage, everything that's happening in it is an API call at the end of the day. Oh, right? wow. It's a REST API. Yeah. So the, what they're doing is just they're displaying this in a graphical user interface for for the people. So that's what actually what I've done too, taking the same exact data to the REST API and displaying it just in this format. So what that means is that, hey, you don't like Cisco v Manage the interface, you can develop your own. That's cool, yeah, right? that's a good point. Yeah. Or you can add features, hey, this is too verbose for you, or you want to simplify it, perfectly fine. It's gonna take you no coding experience at all, two weeks maximum to get this right uh, interface running. You have the option of seeing over here too, uh, the control uh, status, 10 is up, six is partial right. So you get a very nice generic view of your uh, vManage single tenant instance. So you did the backend code, yeah? like all the rest API calls. Yeah. But then you had some help with the with the front end, and sorry, right. I, I can't remember now. What was the front end written in? It's React. It's based on React. It's JavaScript, uh, and my colleague used one of the frameworks for this, right, uh, to come up with this. This is pretty fancy, snazzy, right? Yeah. You could make it simpler, or but the people can but people can download this. Is that yes, right? Yes, they can download this. They can have a look at the code, play they can it. modify it, play with it, add features. I mean, really, whatever they want to do with it. Code exchange, we have sample code. So there's uh, the SD-WAN demo, but we also have what we call code exchange. So you will have here access to um, SD-WAN API. So get started. We have a Postman collection and environment there. We have a CL application, right, to apply uh, to attach and detach templates, configuration templates to vManage and specific v edges. So we'll show you there, okay, these are the APIs. This is a Python code, how to do it, how to de uh, develop an API application with that. And it's gonna take you, like I said, if you go through this, it's probably gonna take you a day to go through the whole uh, content, the whole learning lab to just to get you started with Postman and everything, so. I mean, you're a great example of, like I said, of someone who's gone from networking to like leveraging automation in your job. Yeah. Um, and I, we've repeated this in other videos, but I'm gonna ask you again, but just because someone might only be watching this video, is which language would you recommend people start with? Yeah, so I mean, for me, per, and it's a personal uh, opinion, right? Uh, I found Python to be the easiest to pick up. And this is written in Python? Yes, so the backend for this is all Python. Uh, with the Swagger interface, and actually the, the backend provides an API and it's turned and the front end calls that and just displays the data. So it's kind of like a wrapper in between the actual vManage API and the front end. So I'm just gathering specific information from the vManage, packaging it up and uh, making it available to the front end. So and what are you, are you, are you using a database or how are you storing the data? No, so it's just, just it's, live queries. It's all live. It's all live data, right, from the vManage. We're not storing anything. No databases involved. It's just 
live data from from the vManage backend. So in your experience now that you've done, you know, you were a pure network guy, I'm assuming you were like CLI, the yes. hardcore like oh, yeah. CLI guy. I mean, CLI was like everything. Yeah. And now you've kind of moved into like having this extra skill. How has it changed things for you? Like your perspective, your job, stuff like that? Um, I mean, some of the tasks that used to take a lot of time, now they're, you know, automated and I can do them within seconds. So I like that aspect a lot, right? So something like the menial tasks that you have to do, hey, there's a new application there, deploy this VLAN, make sure the trunk has that VLAN, make sure it's propagated throughout the network. Uh, so that part I enjoy it very much because it's something that I was been doing for many, many, yeah. many years. How many times have you typed router uh, OSPF uh, <laughs> or Comf-T? I yeah. yeah. So I, that's that's really something that I found inspiring. That is like, hey, it's something that I've been doing for a long time. I can do it now within seconds, and then I can dedicate the rest of the time to something else, to learning something new. So. So you don't see that this kind of stuff is going to take our jobs away. It's like enhancing your job. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's just making things easier for the usual, like I said, you know, easy tasks. Yeah. But then it gives you more options and more time, right, to, to look for something new, to skill up, to learn new skills, to learn new technologies. Did you find that you're less bored now because now you can study cool stuff rather than having to like constantly do the mundane yeah, stuff? Yeah, that's actually one of, one of the advantages of this, right? Because yeah. you get to a point where you're doing these things for so much, for so long and so many times, and then it brings like a spark of something new, of, uh, of a challenge. And I mean, I love a good challenge, so. I think that's the thing. I mean, most network people enjoy learning new things oh and it's like really boring to configure vlans all the time exactly exactly so if you're at that point you know you're getting bored or you're learning or you got you're gonna get there don't worry but um there's a lot of content out there don't be scared right because a lot of people is like oh my job is gonna disappear or yeah nothing's gonna go away it might change i mean most probably you know the things will change and they have been changing for the past 30 years right since cisco is here i mean all the protocols we will still be doing uh token ring and x25 right but it evolved it changed and uh, like you said networking people are uh love learning new, new new things and this is just another tool in their tool belt at the end of the day so, I mean, you, I think you've said it a few times, don't be scared. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. There's, we have a huge community of people out there that they're more than happy to help you out, yeah. right? There's content. And if you have any questions at any point whatsoever, we have a WebEx Teams room. You can just ask in there. You'd be surprised. There's like thousands of people already there. And they're, if there's not somebody from DevNet, there's somebody from the community that this will This is answer. on the DevNet website, yeah? Yes. So developer.com, you have links there to the support community, to the learning labs, to code exchange, to video courses, and it's all free. Yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's I mean, that, that's what's amazing about DevNet. Everything is free. It's really cool. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I've been to GTC a while back. Everything is paid. Yeah. I've been to Google Next. Everything is paid. You need credits, right? So that was surprising to me because I'm coming from DevNet. It's like I'm expecting everything free. And they're like, no, I need 30 bucks here, five credits there seven credits it's like but i'm expecting this for free <laughs> yeah exactly so adrian i want to say thanks so much man thanks, i really David. appreciate no, it man thanks it's for having really me. appreciate it man yeah. that's brilliant thanks so everyone don't be scared adrian's proven like many others you know it's possible to do really cool things with um programming so want to wish you all the very best adrian again thanks thanks david thanks Cheers. everybody